14 million people in England and Wales alone say they have no religion at all. It is a striking number. It's more than the populations of Greece, of Cuba and of Somalia. In Britain, fewer people are now calling themselves Christian and there are some interesting and unexpected faith-related developments. Take a look at this, for instance. It may look like uh, a church service, but in fact it is an atheist service that was held in London this week. The music is more up-to-date than you might expect in church, and the pastor was comedian Sanderson Jones. Think about it. Uh, all the atoms, uh, all the atoms in your hand were created uh, because of some billion to one antimatter imbalance, a trillionth of a trillionth of a second after the universe began. Don't stop me now. Such a good time. Of course, we're not taking the Mickey out of the church. We, if anything, we are trying to uh, build upon it. So could these kinds of services challenge religious ones? With me now are philosopher and author Alain de Botton, who's written a book called Religion for Atheists, and also Elizabeth Oldfield, who's director of the Christian think tank Theos. Um, Alain de Botton, I want to talk to you about this manifesto for atheists that you've um, released uh, relatively recently. Um, perhaps I could just share it with everyone by just going through what you've called 10 virtues for the modern age. So before we discuss them, here they are. I'm going to go through them in turn. Uh, Number one, resilience, which you call um, coping with life being tough. Empathy, connecting, connecting imaginatively with other people. Um, patience, sacrifice. Now, there's a, an interesting one. You call it the art of sacrifice. Politeness, um, humour, again, interesting. Self-awareness, forgiveness, hope, and lastly, confidence. You say that we need to be more daring. Now, the interesting thing about that list is that a lot of those concepts are ones that we would associate with religion. I mean, sacrifice, forgiveness, is it really faith use? Um, I think what interests me is the attempt to be good. You know, if you gathered around a group of atheists and said, I'm not going to work on being richer, more successful, healthier. My real priority is to be good. People would think you're completely crazy. The idea of being good and practicing at being good is something that we inherently associate with religions. And where I'm starting from is what happens if you're not a believer? What happens to that mission? And I think it's actually a very important mission, the attempt to be good. And you know, for thousands of years, philosophers, theologians have proposed what they call virtues, in other words, optimal ways of behaving. And, you know, I drew up a list of 10, you could come up with 15 or 20 or seven. It doesn't really matter which they are because everyone's going to incline more towards some than yeah. to others. The, what interests me is the mission of trying to be good. I think that's interesting. Okay, but by, but, but by uh, doing a list in, in this way, I mean, some people are calling it commandments. I mean, inherently you're accepting that there is something to be said for religion. It is, you know, these are values that, that are usually associated yeah. with religions. Absolutely. My, my whole book, Religion for Atheists, is an attempt to argue that religion has all sorts of incredibly interesting structures, rituals, belief systems that atheists neglect at their peril, and that it's our duty in a secularizing world to be influenced by the best moments of religion. Okay, Elizabeth Oldfield, I wonder what you make of all of this. I mean, I think probably watching the Church for Atheist pictures, I would imagine, probably filled you with horror. But what do you make of what Alain's saying? No, not at all. And I think that it's a very worthy thing to be thinking about being good. It certainly is worth our time more than thinking about how to be sexy or how to be rich, uh, which is what I think culture pulls us towards focusing our time and attention on. I would totally applaud this project. My question would be, how effective is it? Why are you trying to be good? Alain is intelligent and brilliant, but is him saying that he thinks these are important virtues going to be enough uh, to, to push people to make those hard decisions? Anna? I think that's true. There's a question of motivation, and religion has tended to have, of course, the most obvious apparent reward system, which is heaven and hell, or retribution, or reward. And I think that um, if you're an atheist, you can't rely on that, and in a way you have to believe something which is, uh, requires even more faith um, than a religious person might be able to muster, which is uh, the belief that virtue is its own reward, that being good feels good. Um, and that I think none of us, when we lose our temper, when we're mean, when we lie, when we deceive, we're not, we don't tend to be, you know, Look, greatly proud of ourselves. Elizabeth, is, is, this more, is this a more realistic or practical framework for our lives, certainly in the West, where people clearly, the evidence shows, are moving away from religion than mm. the Christian way of life, or indeed a way of life involving religious faith? I think that if you are framing ethics, framing how to be good simply on it being its own reward, then 
I'd question where we're going to head with that is our sole form of moral it's not reasoning. motivating enough? It's not that it's not motivating enough, it's that it's incredibly vulnerable. I don't actually think goodness always is its own reward. I think that's why Jesus tells us that we have to uh, kind of love our enemies, even though it's really difficult. It's easy to love our friends. And if we create a world where we, where we are good because it is only good for us, then I think we start off getting into some serious ethical it's true, trouble. Isn't it? We're talking about leading a good life, but often, you know, you see people leading exemplary lives and nothing good ever happens to them. Yes, I mean, look, I think that often the reason why people are not good is not because they're committedly evil, but often because, and I know this sounds perhaps trivial, because they forget to make an effort. Um, you know, there is a small percentage of the population that is committedly evil and another small percentage that is committedly good. Most of us are somewhere in the middle and we get distracted from the task of being good. And I think that's why it's incredibly important to have a public space which nudges us in the right direction. This is where things like media are incredibly important. If we have beamed at us images which constantly show the worst sides of human nature, we'll think that's acceptable. And or, that's why it's or, or, or we'll think this is not the way uh, we live our lives. I mean, I happen to be broadcasting on a television channel that does show an awful lot of nasty things happening mm. around the world. Elizabeth? And I'd want to really bring you up, Alan, on that understanding of religion as about kind of following a list of rules to get to heaven or hell. I think the key difference between this kind of emerging ethical tradition, which I'm really pleased to see happening, and the Christian ethical tradition is that in Christianity, goodness is a response to something. I don't think for most Christians it is about getting to heaven or um, getting kind of points. It is imitative and responsive. We love because God first loved us. We forgive because God forgave okay. us. And that then, allows something that makes it relational. It makes it more of a partnership and adventure than just pulling your bootstraps up and making New Year's resolutions okay. to be but good. But if, if we are talking about living a good life, because your manifesto is about living a good life, about making the effort. Elizabeth, is it possible in your view um, to live a good life and to be a good person without a religious framework? Of course it is. I think you'd find few people who would argue the opposite. But you think it's a shame or they're, they're missing something? I just think it sounds quite lonely. It sounds quite hard work to be doing this, becoming a virtuous person. And as someone coming from the Christian ethical tradition, I love the fact that being good is not just about me. It's in response to someone. It's in relationship. It's in community. Were you brought up as a religious person? No, I was brought up as an atheist. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, where we are in relation to matters of religion is on the whole something you're born into, not something, you know, very few of us sit down and go, shall I believe or shall I not? Let me weigh up the evidence. Let me, you know, we feel our way towards these things. And so the question is not, you know, should we try and convert or deconvert, but just given where we are, what's the best way to lead a good life? But was, was your manifesto a reaction then to what? I suppose, you know, when you think about atheism, a, a, a lot of us um, might think, well, I'm not really sure what that is, or it just sounds really quite negative. Absolutely, absolutely. Atheism for the last 10, 15 years has been concentrated on refuting religion, saying religion is stupid, rather than doing the much more interesting thing, which is to say, OK, let's imagine we don't believe in religion. Where now? How can we manage? Because, you know, bound up with religion is not just about whether God does or doesn't exist. It's bound up with all sorts of things, like how communities organise, how education's organised, how virtue is organised. And I think that atheists haven't given enough thought till now to all these questions, contenting themselves instead with simply um, uh, ridiculing religion. So would you, Elizabeth, see this as a positive development? I mean, what Alain is outlining is positive for you compared to how you might view atheism otherwise? Yeah, it is positive. What I'd like to see coming around it is a framework, um, a world in which these things are possible. I think that there's a lot of brilliant philosophers really wrestling with how you base your commitment to goodness as an atheist. And I know Alan's thought about that a lot, but you don't see that here. You just see some kind of good advice yeah. and I wonder how effective it I will want, be. You know, this, this story has sparked quite a debate on our Facebook page and I want to put a couple of these thoughts to both of you because I wonder whether we are really talking about morality rather than the faith or religious faith. And this was a point that, um, that one person emailed in from Turkey saying, as long as a society lacks morality, whether religious or not, there will never be a sense of decent and fair living. Anna? Yes, and it's always seemed very important to atheists that morality should be uncoupled from religion. Um, because the problem is that if you uh, decide you don't believe in religion, you might decide you don't believe in morality. Of course, that's not true at all, but that's the danger. And that's why I think having an ethics that is independent of faith is very important for society. OK, um, Graham Moore in the UK, and I want to put this to you, Elizabeth, says we don't need man-made religious uh, rules. We need to live our lives simply and humbly, as God tells us. Of course, the reality in the country you live in, mm. this one, Britain, is that most people are turning away from Christianity. There's definitely been an increase in people who would kind of tick that box on the census. There's a really complicated picture and shifts in changes in allegiance in religion in this country and I think it's a really exciting time to see what happens.